Thanks for joining us uh, to another webinar organized by Princeton here. And uh, today we have Benjamin Golub with us. Hi, Ben. Hi, great to be here. Great, Ben. So Ben will talk about modern AI for economic research, I guess more broadly for social science research. And he will provide an overview of tools. And this part we will focus on Refine Inc which allows you to generate referee reports for your academic paper, identify errors and proofs in the empirical strategy, provide much more clarity how to write the paper better, and check for consistencies. In the other parts, which is separated as separate videos, we will have a tutorial how to use cursor, how to use and combine many, many different uh, LLMs working in parallel. And in the third, a component, a separate video again, it will be about best practices, how to and when to prompt LLMs. Um, the concept is that after you do all, you know, the process of research now with AI, obviously quality control is still a huge, a huge issue. And actually for me with AI, the promise is that you work faster, but of course, as, you, as everyone knows, when you work really slowly and and um, have time to focus on your you know on your the details of your work, your mind does a lot of background processing, and you really have a, a deep map of what's going on. And one of the risks I think of accelerating scientific progress with is is that there is going to be fewer people with quite as much you know deep context because they've spent less time with pencil and paper, and so it makes quality control more important. Um, because certainly with, you know, as I said from the very first slide, these tools will not guarantee logical consistency. They will often make an assumption for convenience in the middle of a proof, which was never stated in the main, you know. And so whether that happened through human behavior or through AI assistance, you want a technical referee report that will make sure the whole thing sticks together. And, you know, now that I've, I've those of you, many of you know these tools, once you know these tools, you could build versions of the pipe, kind of pipeline we've been talking about for quality control. Um, what we've done with Refine is just um, built a state-of-the-art version of that to automate it for you. So even if you had all of our tools you and you wanted to mimic a deep technical referee report, you would have to sit at the computer for hours. We just take your paper and do it for you. And every time a new tool of the same type has come out, including, of course, the big, you know, the standard tools, ChatGPT, we always compare how, how good our reports are, how good they are, and we find Refine is, um, is deeper and more thorough. So, um, next is slide. Is it better to upload the tech version or the PDF file is as There's, good as it? I think I recommend the PDF because with tech, usually you have um, labels rather than, rather, than, um, and rather than numbers. And unfortunately, all the AI models will, will refer to your results by numbers that they're guessing rather than they'll try to reconstruct the, they'll try to compile it mentally basically, which is not great. Um, so at, next slide. Um, you know, I, I don't like, I like to let our users speak. So Omer who, who does both economics and probability um, did this on actually one of his more, more technical kind of mathematically harder papers. And he says the depth of the reading performed by Refine was impressive and resulted in the identification of subtle error, subtle issues would have taken an expert many hours to complete, even with ChatGPT Pro. So he's taking, he takes the Frontier tool seriously. Um, he reports on his math paper in advantage. There's a, a similar testimonial um, from, from uh, Drew on the next slide, Drew Feudenberg. Um, mm -hmm. He said that it's spotted a number of errors, both obvious ones and some that are fairly subtle. And it does a great job for checking Consist for consistency between what is said in various parts of the paper. So that's one of our what, one of the things that tends to surprise people is that Refine, unlike a lot of other tools, said on page three you define this thing like this, but on in the appendix on page forty two you used it in an incompatible way. So which one do you mean? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So if you want to try it, here's what you should do. Because um, I think the the only the best way to see whether it's useful for you is to is to just see it working on your um, go to refine.inc. Click preview. Uh, uh, cr you'll cl click preview. It'll guide you through creating an account. If you want to be impressed, I would recommend taking a paper that is, you know, more than more than ten pages long. Ideally, more than twenty. And the more the more um, 
he reasoning heavy, the better. Um, and what you'll get is our 10 comments, hopefully not random ones, but ones that we think show off some of the obsessive, you know, value of refine. Um, if if you've run preview credits before and you didn't, you did it on a document where it wasn't so impressive, feel free to write to um, the help at refine.inc and we'll give you more preview credits so you can just see, you know, we want people to, uh, and we'll do, we'll, we now can afford to offer more, more, uh, we're going to figure out ways to give people a good, a good way but to is it primarily for theory papers, I can also upload empirical papers. And Very good question. So let, let's skip ahead just a little bit. Oh, sorry. Um, so this is just going through the process of you upload you and then you so this is I ran a theory paper and the kinds of comments that refine gives are um, this is a paper I'm working on, you know, it'll one natural thing is it'll just point out a sign error. So you, that it'll mm -hmm. say that you um, we're not careful about sign, but it also the second comment is a much more substantive error where, um, technically speaking, uh, you know, there's a, a mathematical assertion there that doesn't follow, and it says, you know, the thing A does not imply B, thing two, so you you need to you know change your conditions. To Marcus's question, let's jump ahead. We're gonna jump jump past this. Um, so. I will actually, I'll, I'll get to the answer empirical versus theory, but we recommend using it basically before other people are going to see it when you care about correctness. Um, and yeah. we're, we're uh, now um, the questions are coming up in the chat about kind of, eth you know, practices and ethics. We're piloting pi with some journals um, who we're not going to name yet, but we're, we're piloting using Refine at that last stage before a paper goes to press. Editors generally that we've spoken with are very open to refine being used to complement the review process. So on the question of ethics, I think what would be appropriate is if you do use it to guide your reading of a paper or see what you want to check, you know, with your own thinking. Um, if you write that in a letter to the editor, I think there would be very it, it would it's I think would be unreasonable and very unlikely that anybody would would um be upset with using refined in that way. Of course, the journals should probably pay for it and use it for that purpose. But I think with refine or any other AI tool, so one advantage refine has is we have ironclad privacy. We do not ever share or train on or let anybody else train on the text of the papers. And so mm -hmm. um, Hito Imbens had circulated guidance that maybe generative AI is a little dangerous because it can put the paper in a situation where other people might train on it, uh, you know, where if you if I upload your paper to ChatGPT, maybe ChatGPT will use it in a way that the author wouldn't have liked, and so that's something that Refine can guarantee will not happen because because the contracts with the AI providers are written that way. Um, but I honestly think those issues will have to get AI will just become a constant co-pilot in any kind of academic work, and so I think it's a big challenge for the profession and the journals and and all of us to find practices that. Um, respect privacy and respect people's uh, concerns, but at the same time, allow these tools to be useful. Um, I'll wrap up in, Mar is it okay if I take one more minute, Marcus? No, no, take another 10 if you want. I, I won't take 10, but l let's go, let's go to the next, um, uh, so. The, I should, uh, so if you're interested, there's this website, refine.inc. Yes, refine.inc. Just two quick points. One, Marcus is, I'll, I'll get to Marcus's question second. Um, people often ask, how different is this really from ChatGPT Pro? Well, much more attention on your paper. And then I expect the frontier models will get better and we'll be able to replicate much of what current Refine does. But what we're, we'll always do is just stay one step ahead of the best tools that exist for software engineers or someone said in the chat, you know, these generalist models, um, they're never going to be quite as good as models that are tailored and, and basically if you take those same models and already do all the scaffolding, that's going to be a better product for a scientist. And so just like there are companies that specialize in making AIs work really well for software, we want to specialize in making them work really well for scientific production. Um, and But this is ahead. not only economics or social sciences, any theoretical paper, is this? Yeah, so I mean, even, so we've had wonderful, we've had really positive reviews from applied mathematicians, computer scientists, um, mm. people, physicists who work on gravity or solid state, um, mm -hmm. And empirical, people often ask us about theory versus empirical. Um, you get a lot of, Refine does point out that standard errors were clustered wrong or that the IV explanation 
doesn't really make sense. The biggest difference in performance between theory and empirical is that a lot of the core content of empirical papers is in tables or charts, which are not parsed perfectly by current um, tools. Mm -hmm. And so basically we, um, we are working really hard on that, but it's not the, the main problem. If you can get your material into, so for an empirical paper, basically it's better to upload the tech with the tables in a, in a text readable form. And then Refine will think about whether the standard errors um, it makes sense in that context and whether whether they you know um, but we would love to hear from users if you if you do it on a type of paper especially in social science and you find the feedback doesn't seem that smart this email address we'd love to hear about your we'll give you free credits and we'll work hard to improve it for your application um, mm -hmm. and I think that's where um, I think that's where I will wrap up I apologize for the technical issues but I um, this it's been super oh, fun to discuss good. these things. Well, that's great. I mean, uh, I learned a lot and I think I know there are a lot of clapping hands coming uh, online. Uh, so it definitely helped me and it will help a lot of people to use these tools more effectively and also to use Refine. And as I told you earlier, I've used it once before on one of my papers before submitting it uh, to make sure that everything is watertight and it, it's a good investment in my view. And Thank I think it's, it's a great contribution to the profession. And I appreciate it. And I like when people go, you know, push the frontier in many dimensions. Thank you. I, you know, it's a little funny. We never, I, I didn't intend initially to make it a business, but we spend a lot of money per paper. So there is no viable way to not charge for it. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit funny to be an entrepreneur, but I'm, it's, I really like, the nice thing is I feel I'm not being pulled away from science because I always have to figure out, you know, I'm working as a scientist and then trying to make this tool better. But so when you were in high school, you never thought, oh, you might become an entrepreneur. Never, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't, I don't have it. But you know, I then I then I was in Silicon Valley for a bit, so I got the bug. Um, so when you slides, so Marcus has the slides. I'm very happy for them to be shared. Great. I will put it on the website, and um, everybody can download the slides. So, thanks a lot, uh, Ben. This was fantastic. Um, uh, we learn a lot, and we still have to learn a lot. Probably, you know, the world is changing very fast in that space. In six months, probably it will be. Have to do another one because things are changing dramatically. I'd be excited to come back. Thank you so much, and uh, and thank you, folks, for all the engagement in the chat. Yes, well, thanks a lot, and to all of you, and I wish you happy holidays. But we will have a special webinar uh, over the holidays, and I hope you will join for that too. It um, it will be a big surprise, hopefully, and. Um, Talk to you soon and thanks to everybody. Bye-bye.